Hi everyone, Hamish and Gabe here from the Uplay team at Massive, and today we're gonna to take a look at RAM, probably the most overlooked part that's sitting in your PC right now. We're gonna take a look at the stats and what all of those mean. Yeah, and to give you an idea of, you know, what kind of difference you can expect with different speeds of RAM, we're gonna do some benchmarks. But, best of all, we have an actual smart person to talk to us about it. Yes. RAM is random access memory. It is temporary fast storage for any kind of data that your computer wants to use. It is also volatile, which means that as soon as the electricity is turned off, the data is gone. So let's start with the first part of the name. It's called random access because you can access any part of the memory just as fast as any other. In contrast with old spinning hard drives where you have to spin the platter and align the read-write head to find the data. To explain DDR, we first need to explain what kind of RAM we generally use. We use a kind of RAM called SDRAM, which is Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. So we have already covered what RAM is, but what is dynamic RAM? Dynamic RAM is when your zeros and ones are stored with a transistor and a charged capacitor. This capacitor needs electricity to keep the value set. This is done every once in a while, or about every 64 milliseconds. So then what is synchronous dynamic RAM? Isn't everything supposed to be asynchronous? So since we're using synchronous RAM, we are synchronizing on every clock signal, but a clock signal is not a regular on-off thing, but a rise and a fall in a signal. So DDR means that we send the data both on the rise of the clock signal and on the fall of the clock signal. So DDR3 versus four are just names that the standardization organization gives to these types of RAM. So the main differences between DDR3 and DDR4 are higher density, higher transfer rates, and lower voltage use. The size of the RAM determines how much data you can store before the operating system starts swapping it out to the page file. More is better, but it kind of depends on what you're doing. But if you're playing games, you should have probably quite a bit of RAM because they are data heavy. Next is the clock speed of the RAM which will indicate how fast it is, or as to better think of how long it is between every RAM operation. So the last part is what we call RAM timing. This can get actually pretty complicated because this deals with the internal timings of RAM, but generally lower is better. I will talk about one timing though, it's called CAS timing or CL timing. It's usually the first number in the timings you'll see. It indicates from the actual signal happening on the pin, to until the data is available on that same pin. Now let's talk about dual channel versus single channel RAM. Dual channel effectively doubles your data rate because now the memory module can actually send two requests at a time. And now for the big question, will RGB make your RAM go faster? Absolutely. So now that we know what all that means, we're gonna actually start testing out some different RAM configurations. Yeah, to do these benchmarks, we're gonna use Cinebench R15 as well as For Honor on extreme settings. For our test, we're using three different RAM speeds. The first being 2400 MHz C14 RAM, and then we're stepping it up to 3000 C15, and then finally, all the way up to 3600 C18. On our testing bench, we're running a Ryzen 7 2700X paired with a Radeon Vega 64 on an X470F Asus motherboard. The default XMP profile will be enabled for every single one of these tests, so the only factor actually changing in the whole testing bench is the RAM itself.
So with the benchmarks done, let's look at the results. Starting off with the 2400 RAM, on Cinebench we received a score of 1714 and the average FPS in For Honor was 109.1. Then moving up to 3000 on our RAM, we saw on Cinebench a score of 1748, with an average FPS on For Honor of 116.4. And finally, rounding it all off with the 3600 MHz RAM, on Cinebench we received a score of 1783 and a slight FPS increase in For Honor up to 117.29. So now that we know what RAM is and how the speed of that RAM can affect your computer's performance, what actually happens once your PC starts using absolutely all of that RAM? Bring back the professor. So now we've seen all the benefits of having a very good RAM. Now we can see what happens when RAM goes wild. So I wrote a little program that will try to eat up all your RAM by asking for memory from the operating system and not letting it go. So I have two versions of it, a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. The 32-bit version, when that runs, we'll try to allocate memory, but it can only allocate up to two gigabytes of RAM. And when it hits that limit, the program will actually crash. And now we're gonna try the 64-bit version and it will try to allocate memory. It will do that very fast. And we will then in the end see that all memory is allocated and then memory starts to getting paged. And we will then try to turn off the application before the computer becomes unusable. Thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully that gives you some more insight into RAM and helps you make that crucial purchase decision. And as we've learned, it's not only size that matters. Yes, and do let us know in the comments below if there's anything more that you're interested in learning about. We'll try and find an expert and pick their brain for you. All right, see you next time.